السلام على الموثى رحمة الله العالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم الست العشر من شهر ربيع الأول ألف وأربعمائة واثنان وأربعون الموافق لي اثنين من شهر أكتوبر شهر أكتوبر نوفمبر صح شهر نوفمبر ألفين وعشرين نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء سأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك في المؤلف وأن يرفع درجته في عليين وأن يبارك في ما نتعلم عبد الرحمن أين نحن ومن تأمل So we are still talking about awham some kind of bad thoughts that some people might be having and uh, also uh, those people who misunderstood the issue of Husn al uh, billah where they expect that they can do whatever they want and at the same time also uh, have Husn al billah azza wa jal and go to paradise in the way they want. So today inshallah we'll complete this uh, issue and move to uh, the next uh, issue bi'idhin Allah ta'ala. يقول ابن القيم رحمه الله ومن تأمل هذا الموضع حق التأمل عالم أن حسن الظن بالله هو حسن العمل نفسه فإن العبد إنما يحمله على حسن العمل حسن ظنه بربه أن يجازيه أن يجازيه على أعماله ويثيبه عليها ويتقبلها منه فالذي حمله على حسن العمل حسن الظن فكلما حسن ظنه بربه حسن عمله وإلا فحسن الظن مع اتباع الهوى عجز يقول ابن القيم رحمه الله whoever observe this issue you know, carefully uh, will know definitely that حسن الظن بالله عز وجل is equal to حسن العمل يعني when you see a person uh, fixing his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the one who is having husnu dhannu billahi azza wa jal so husnu dhannu billah is equal to husnu al-amal ihsan al-amal if a person fixes his uh, uh, I mean, uh, attitude and his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what husnu dhannu is is all about okay so this is very important so amal salih is equal to husnu dhannu العمل السيء is equal to سوء الظن بالله عز وجل قال فإن العبد إنما يحمله على حسن العمل حسن ظنه بربه أن يجازي Why did you become in the way you are? If you're righteous, why are you righteous? Why are you righteous? The greatest motivator for your righteousness is the great hope and belief that you have which uh, guarantees you I mean, guaranteed you the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you participate in righteous deed. So, why are we trying our best? Why are we doing what we are doing? Because we have the belief that if we are righteous and if you are good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to grant us good. So, this belief leads us to fix our attitude, to fix our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to become a good person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you get it, this is a very important uh, information. So if a person is not doing well, that means he doesn't have a good thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you see that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you in the hereafter, why the laziness? You know? Why the laziness? Why the negligence? So if I see a person who is not fixing his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who, uh, instead of uh, 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 I mean, dealing with Allah SWT in the right way, he is dealing with Allah SWT with all kinds of evil attitude. I can confirm that this person doesn't think good about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. قال فكل ما حسن ظنه بربه حسن عمله. So whenever a person fixes and makes a, a good thought and expectation, you know, about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is going to fix his relationship and become good in the eyes of Allah. 
والا وحسن الظن مع اتباع الهوى عجز كما في حديث الترمذي والمسند من حديث شدار بن اوس عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من اتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله الاماني The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said الكيس من دان نفسه so ابن القيم says if a person is claiming to be having حسن الظن بالله عز وجل but at the same time he follows his desire he doesn't want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he follows his desire and claims that he is having husnul dhann billahi azza wa jal this is weakness this is uh, 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 a disappoint disappointment against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like what is mentioned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith of shaddar ibn aws al kayisu man dana nafsahu by the way this hadith is weak so you can use it as a wisdom, but you don't call it the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the narration is weak. Al-Kayyusu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al-mawt. Salaf al-Saleh has been used, have been using this hadith from time to time. So many of them use it as a hadith, but in reality it is a weak narration. So as such we don't attribute it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you can use it as a wisdom because it is true. The content is true. The meaning is correct, you know. الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت. The smart and the wise person is somebody who always judges himself. You know, the smart person in this life and the wisest person in this life is somebody who always judges himself. وعمل لما بعد الموت. And he acts for the sake of that which will come after death. That means he doesn't focus in this on this life. You always look in the future. What will come after the death? So his actions are always reflecting, you know, what he is expecting his future to be. He want his future to be good, so he acts upon that. That's al kayis who takes lesson from the past and fixes his, his present so that the future will be excellent. This is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال uh, uh, whoever fixes the present Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his past if a person fixes the present Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive, forgive the past the hadith of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said man ahsan fi ma baqi ghufir lahu ma mada wa ma baqi if a person is to fix that which remains in his life that means his present Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive the past and also the present. So if a person uh, repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fixes his attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive the past and also the present. And if this is the case, then if this person continue like this, the future is going to be excellent. What is the future? The future is what comes after death. What comes after death is not the end. Sometimes we say, Mathwal insan al akhir, the final destination. But this is wrong. When a person dies, he did not go to the final destination because after death, there will be another life which has no end. That will be the final one. Uh, but death, this is the the state, the, the transit that you are having before you move to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So he said, Al Kais, the smart person is somebody who always judges himself. He monitors his activity and he judges himself. What am I doing? What I'm doing now, is it accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like? Allah rejects it and fixes himself accordingly so that his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be excellent and perfect in the future. Okay, so we should take this uh, wisdom very seriously. Al-Kayyusu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'ad al-mawti wal ajizu man atba'a nafsahu hawaha and the loser, you know, the lazy person uh, the weak person, you know, the negligent, it's somebody who always follow his desire. He always follow his desire. You know, following his desire and always expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him any contrary to that which he is doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jaza'an, wifaqa. It doesn't go like this. 
you fix your attitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with you in the way you don't even deserve, you know, better than what, you, what you're doing. You get it? So it's very important to understand this. You cannot just go and behave in the wrong way and expect good to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah doesn't do this. He set up a principle. If you follow it, you get that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the followers. If you don't follow it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has another uh, option for the one who is not choosing the best way. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, كل أمتي يدخل الجنة إلا من أبا Every single person amongst my ummah will be taken to paradise إلا من أبا Except somebody who doesn't like The companions were surprised They said, Ya Rasulullah How is it possible for somebody to be given paradise And he denies it Because this is too strange The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Said yes من أطاعني دخل الجنة he said, whoever obeys me will get inside paradise. He chose to go to paradise. And whoever disobeys, he is choosing to be taken to other places, not paradise. So disobedience against the Prophet wasallam is equal to choosing other alternative rather than the paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. So as I said, my brothers and sisters, let's focus on monitoring our activities don't let somebody judge you. You judge yourself from time to time. Umar radiallahu anhu was reported to have said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tu hasabu wa zinuha qabla an tu zanu. He used to tell people that judge yourself bef before the real judgment takes place. You know. Be the judges of yourself before the real judgment uh, takes place. Qalaw bil jumlati fa husnul dhanni innama yakunu ma'atiqadi asbab in najati he says, generally, in conclusion, cannot be accepted except if a person believes in the asbabun naja, the causes of success, you know, the, the, the path that can lead to success. If you believe in the causes of the success, and then at the same time, you have the husnudan, this one works. You have the causes and you follow the causes. You try to bring the causes. This husn of dhani works with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that, you'll be useless. You're just wasting your time. Somebody who believes in uh, the other way, you know, that is no way for ihsan of dhani to be with somebody who has wrong faith, wrong iman, wrong amal. And at the same time, husn of dhani billahi azza wa jal, it doesn't work. فَإِنْ قِيلَ بَلْ يَتَعَدْتَ ذَلِكَ وَيَكُونُ مُسْتَنَدُ حُسْنِ الظَّنِّ سَاعَةُ مَغْفِرَةِ اللَّهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ وَعَفْوِهِ وَجُودِهِ وَأَنَّ رَحْمَتَهُ سَبَقَتْ غَضَبَهُ وَأَنَّهُ لَا تَنْفَعُهُ الْعُقُوبَ وَلَا تَذُرُهُ وَلَا يَذُرُهُ الْعَفُوْ قيل الأمر هكذا والله فوق ذلك وأجل وأكرم وأجود وأرحب ولكن إنما يضع ذلك في محله اللائق به إنه سبحانه وتعالى موصوف بالحكمة والعزة والانتقام والشدة البطش وعقوبة من يستحق العقوبة He says somebody might say but it is true you know I can just depend on the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says true I can just keep on doing whatever I want because we learn from the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى superseded his anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intensifies his, his mercy more than the, the anger. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kataba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Dalika fi kitabin indahu inna rahmati sabakat ghadabi. So some, some people might say, but why not? Why can't we just do whatever we want as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told us this? So they're depending on what? On the afu. And the rahma, they forgot the other side of the wing. If you remember, we said the pillars of ibadah are three: the hub, the hope, and the fear. You must maintain all the three for you to survive. But there are a lot of people who are dependent on what the hope. You know, these are the ones that we're talking about now. As if there is no punishment at all. That's why Ibn Qayyim says. Yes, if somebody depends on the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah and the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, generosity of Allah and keep committing sin without repenting, 
he should he should we, we should tell him yes all of these things are true and correct but you're putting them in the wrong place we also believe like the way you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful actually beyond what you're talking about we be, we we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fawqadalik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than your explanation wa ajl wa akram wa ajwad wa arham you know all of those sifat that you have mentioned is better than your comprehension actually we have a good faith and better faith than yours he is replying the person who said i will commit sin and i don't care because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafurur rahim so he said ibn qayyim said look at knowledge he said we believe in that but the difference between us and you is that we believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hakim he placed He's al hakim al hakim means the person the one who uh, who put everything in his own proper place you know that's why they said al hikmatu wadhu ash shay'i fi mahallihi as sahih wadhu ash shay'i fi mahallihi as sahih wisdom is to put something in its proper place you know to put it in its proper place that's wisdom because you might put something in in its place but not the proper position you know wisdom is to put it in the proper position i built a house and then i asked the carpenter to uh, make a kursi you know chair for me you know the furnitures when he brought some of them he put them in the toilet you know akramakum allah he put them in the house he told me that yes the place for the chairs is inside the house and i put it in the house Yes, if you look at the, the, the first statement, I mean, the place of the chair is inside the house. Yes, he's correct. He can put it anywhere he wants, but that was not the place to be. To uh, I, mean, I mean, to put the, the uh, not the, that was not the correct place. You know, he put the beds in the the living room or the guest room. That was not the correct place. You know? So wisdom. I'm just using this random example to bring closer to you the meaning of wisdom. Wisdom is to put things in their own proper place. And Allah SWT is Al-Hakim. Allah SWT is Al-Hakim. Al-Hikmah min al-Sifat al-Lazimati lillahi azza wa jalla is the Sifa that is always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tinfakku anhu abdan is part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses wisdom in everything he does. That's the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah contrary to others. There are some people who believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, you cannot even attribute to him wisdom. I don't know how do they think, but leave them with their thoughts and their thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't believe in that. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never did something without wisdom in it. Whether we know it or we don't know it, but because some of these things, we uh, our comprehension is lower than that. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not talk about that, because we cannot comprehend it. Okay? Our job is to submit and to believe in it in the way. It is. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described with wisdom, with izza also at the same time. Strength and power, you know, and authority and greatness. Well, intiqam, taking revenge, you know, bringing those criminals down to their knees, you know, teaching them lesson. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very strong when he holds somebody accountable, accountable for what he did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he punishes the person who deserves to be punished. He says, Falokana Ma'awal Husnu Dhani Ala a Husnu Dhani Bihi Ala Mujara di Sifati Hi was Mahi, Lash Tarakafi the Alkal Burwal Fajr, Wal Mu'min al Kafi, Wawali Yuhu Waduhu, Fama and Vaul Mujri Ma Asma Asma who was Sifatu who Wakad Ba Abi Sakhati Hi Wagadabi. He said, If the reference concerning the, the forgiveness or our activities, you know, is to refer to Allah's sifat. If this is what we will be doing, you know, some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no difference between mu'min and kafir then. There is no difference between iman and kufr. And there is no difference between wilaya and, uh, and adawa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, this is not the truth, you know, this is not the truth. Because we understand from the nusus of the Sharia that the sinner, you know, the mujrib, the bad person, doesn't get any benefit, you know, from those names that he is relying upon. You know. So the afu and the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa taala benefits somebody who repents. It doesn't benefit somebody who did not repent. 
you must qualify that, then you get it. It is not something that Allah wants to just keep it randomly for people to just pick it up in the way they want. No, it doesn't go like that. A person must be qualifying that. Then Allah wants to grant him. He said, how is it possible for somebody who neglected the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is living in the, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his anger, who is always or in most instances being cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also so Ibn Qayyim says, this person who is always neglecting the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting involved in sins you know, and activities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates, engaging in the maharim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, how is it possible for this person to get the benefit of husn al Which husn al is this? And they say the real husn al is the one is benefiting nobody except somebody who repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody who regrets, and somebody who stop committing that sin and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. He said, this is what husn al is about. The first one is deception. E Allah, this is deception. Somebody who commits sin and keep committing sin and keep going in the wrong direction, and then at the same time he thinks that he is observing husn al dhanna billahi azza wa jal, and Allah SWT is going to give him other than what he is doing, it doesn't go like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says jaza'an wifaqa. Wala tastatil hadha al fasla, fa inna al hajata ilayhi shadidatun li kulli ahad. And Ibn al Qayyim says, please don't get bored. And he, pay attention to this and be patient and read this this uh, this uh, uh, this matter from time to time because the need of humankind to this you know and to master and to understand this subject is 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 so is so great you know uh, it's very pressing Ibn Qayyim says human beings need to know this a lot and as such he said don't get bored don't get annoyed don't be lazy read and try to understand and ask about it. Make sure you understand it properly. قَالَ فَفَرْقٌ بَيْنَ حُسْنُ الظَّنِّ بِاللَّهِ وَبَيْنَ الْغُرُورِ بِهِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ فَجَعَلَ هَأُولَئِ أَهْلَ الرَّجَائِ لَلْبَطَّالِينَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says there is a difference between حُسْنُ الظَّن to deceive yourself, to think, to put things in the wrong, wrong perception, to have a wrong perception about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allah, he said, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah. Inna alladhina amanu wa hajaru wa jahadu fi sabilillahi ula'ika yarjuna rahmatullah. Those who believe, wa hajaru, and they migrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they left the places where they're not supposed to stay in that place, and they moved to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or they do hijrah in general from the place of ma'asi to the place of ta'a. Wa jahadu fi sabilillah and they participate in jihad fi sabilillah azza wa jal. Ula'ika yajuna rahmatullah. These are the people who have the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qasara al-raja'a fi ha'ula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qasara al-raja'a fi ha'ula. He restricts the hope, you know, to those people. You know, so subhanAllah, it's not just the person who just come and say, I hope to mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have husn al billahi azza wa jal, and do not participate in these activities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here that the only one who could uh, qualify this uh, or equal mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is somebody who believed first. And also migrate, that's when he put his faith into practice and action. You know, they migrated, they left the sins, you know, they go back to righteousness. That's when they, commit, they, 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 they observe the tawbah. وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا And they participate in the jihad فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أُولَئِكَ يَجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ So Ibn Qayyim says, these are the people of Raja, not those lazy people, you know, and weak uh, uh, people in the society who are having bad thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected that thought and rejected that expectation because it is placed in the wrong, in the wrong way. وَقَدْ قَالَ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِلَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا 
من بعد ما فتنوا ثم جاهدوا جاهدوا وصبروا إن ربك من بعدها لغفور رحيم. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says also in the last part of Surah An-Nahl, He says, and Allah subhanahu wa taala, ثم إن ربك للذين هاجروا. Allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, in in relation to the the those who migrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala after them being tested and punished by the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa taala. ثم جاهدوا and they 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 participate in jihad وصبروا and they they became patient. They observed patience when it comes to righteousness, patience when it comes to staying away from sins, and patience when it comes to the calamity and the tests that are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna rabbaka min ba'diha lagafurin lagafur rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins. So you see, these people, they get the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy after what? Participation in jihad, participation in tawbah, participation in hijrah, participation in righteousness. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them what they're looking for. So these are the people of hope. These are the people that you can say they have ihsan al-dhanubil, husn al-dhanubil lahi azza wa jal. Not somebody who sit, you know, without participa participation in any good action, in any righteousness. Instead, he engaged in evil deeds and all sorts of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. But at the same time, he will, he will tell you that I have husn al-dhanubil lahi azza wa jal. I have husn al-dhanubil lahi azza wa jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. قال فالعالم يضع الرجاء مواضعه والجاهل المغتر يضعه في غير مواضعه. He said the knowledgeable person, the wise and the smart person is somebody who put things in their proper place. But the, the, the person who lives in deception, you know, deceives himself, you know, who has but thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is somebody who misplaced things from their proper position. And, uh, and think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him other than what he's doing. It doesn't go. So I guess, bi'idhan Allah ta'ala, with this lengthy explanation by Ibn al-Qayyim, we understand the difference between husn al-dhan billah wa su'ul dhan. So basically what he's saying, if you want to know whether you have husn al-dhan billah or not, just look at your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if you have ikhlas, you're mukhlis, you do things for the sake of Allah, and if you engage in, in a righteous deed, you know, and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever you commit sin, you are among those people who have it. Hassan al Billah has As Hassan al Basri said last week, he told us that Hassan al Dhanu Billah is equal to Hassan al Amal. If there is no Hassan al Dhan, there is no, if there is no Hassan al Amal, there is no Hassan al Dhan at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. So, what is my job and what is your job? is to stand upright, to maintain our istiqamah, to know that what you're doing is correct. And if you tilt a bit, one day, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The door is always open as long as you don't reach the last moment of your life. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the tawbah of one of you as long as he, didn't, he does not reach the gargara. Gargara is the last minute. When you see the angel of death, in this case, tawbah will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you. Or you do not repent until the time you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, tawbah also will not be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali and Duruna illa and yati humallahu fi the lunim, illa and tati humal malaika to awiati a rabbuka awiati a baadu ayati rabbik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, People are not waiting for anything illa and yati humallahu fi the lunim minal kamami wal malaika. Illa and yati tati humal malaika to awiati a rabbuka awiati a baadu ayati rabbik. So people are not waiting for anything except to see the angels coming to them. This is during the death. Awiyati ya rabbuk. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will meet them. This is on the day of judgment. Awiyati ya ba'adu ayati rabbik. Oh one, some of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come and meet them. This is the rising of the sun from the west. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talk about that. So these are the three places mentioned by the scholars where tawbah doesn't benefit a person. When you see the angel of, uh, when the sun rises from the west, when you see the angel of death, you know, the soul already reached here. Angel of death is just waiting for the last moment to pick it up. When you see the angel of death, the time is over. Get the idea. And the last moment is when you meet Allah SWT on the day of judgment. There will be no tawbah. Tawbah will, regret will never uh, be tolerated. Allah SWT says, يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى A person will be reflecting. You know, remembering that which he did in this life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى Regret will never benefit a person on the day of judgment.
So, brothers and sisters, when is the best time for us to repent? Now. Wallahi, I mean it now. The best time, to, actually it's not the best, the only time for the repentance is now. Why is it now? Because if you say, I will delay the tawbah, inshallah, tomorrow I will repent. What makes you think you will live until tomorrow, you know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lot of examples in this life, you know, whereby people are so healthy according to what we see, you know. But then after a few minutes, this person would drop down dead. Why is that? Because his time is over. You know, the time is up. And this is also one of the, the, one of the, the signs of the Day of Judgment, Mawtul Fajr. The sudden death that takes place from time to time, you know. For the good ones is good news. There is a hadith that talk about this for the good ones, but the hadith is weak. But the scholars talk about this, you know, as it could be, in light Allah, we hope that this is because of the good relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this count from the stupor of death, brought him just like that, just in few seconds, you know. You know because some people, they would just fall down before you realize they're gone. If they're righteous, it doesn't harm them. But they're, if they're evildoers, that's really a tragedy. You Allah, that shows how much they have no mass and weight, you know. They have no weightage, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give them any consideration, you know. Allah says to some of them, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا So when the mawt al-fajr comes, the sudden death comes to a wrongdoer, you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even care to give him a chance to say la ilaha illallah to give him a chance to say maybe some wasiyah to fix something Allah SWT did not give him that chance that's the reason why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says mawtul fajr akhdatu asif you know, it's really a moment of regret to have somebody not been given a chance by Allah SWT to utter something to the family members to tell them what he wants before death so this is who we are None of us, I believe, none of us, I believe, none of us has some kind of appointment between him and, or agreement between him and the angel of death that you will not come until you tell me. That's only for the Anbiya and the Rasulullah. They're also not having appointment because he, the angel of death, doesn't have that authority to give them appointment and to tell them when are they going to die. Allah says, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تموت. So we don't know, and the angel of death also, they're just, they're given a time, and they're not told by Allah SWT to inform that person when exactly is he going to die. But in the case of the prophets and the, and the messengers, Allah SWT usually send an angels before their death to tell them that your time is closer. Would you like to go or you want to stay? You know, that's what happened between Musa and the angel of death when Musa slapped his face you know, and destroyed his eyes because he couldn't recognize him. So the first place when he comes to him to his house and then Musa saw him, so was the person coming to his house, so he slapped his face. So he destroyed the eyes of that image, you know, which Allah SWT granted the angel of death to come to Musa in the form of human beings actually. Because if he see him in the form of angel, <clears throat> he would never deny him. So he just saw a man and he couldn't recognize him inside his house. So he hit him. He destroys his eyes. So the angel went back to Allah SWT and said, Arsaltani ila... Ya Allah, you have sent me to a person who doesn't want to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, go back to him and ask him. If this is the case, he wants to live, all that he has to do is to go to a, a, a cow, you know, you know the hair of the cow is very small. Go to a cow and put his hand on it. Whatsoever is covered by his hand of a hair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him with every piece of hair a year. <coughs> You can imagine how many years Musa is going to li live additionally. Hundreds of years. He said, just go and take a cow and put your hand on it. Whatever you cover on it, of, of, of a hair, Allah SWT give you a year on it. Musa told him, you know, in the second time when the angel came, and he told him what Allah SWT says, Musa told him, then after all of these ages, then what? Angel of death said, death. Because Allah SWT says, Kullu nafsin He says, after that is death. Musa said, then I want it now. <laughs> SubhanAllah. He said, I want it now. And then he asked Allah SWT that if he takes his life, 
He says, Ya Allah, I want to die in a place which is closer to Bayt al-Baqdis, Ramya to Hajari. He said, a place where if you throw a stone to Bayt al-Baqdis, that stone can reach the Bayt al-Baqdis. Why didn't he ask Allah SWT to let him die in the, Bayt al in the place of the Bayt al-Baqdis? You know, in the place very close or next to the Bayt al-Baqdis? The sc scholars argued here a lot. Some of them said, most likely because he died before the end of the period of the punishment uh, by Allah SWT for the Jews. You know, Allah SWT was punishing them for 40 years. So they said he died before the end of this period and he was a Jew. So that place was banned. So that's why he asked Allah SWT to take his soul closer to that place. And the Prophet Allah SWT saw the place. And by the way, uh, Sheikh Al-Sam bin Taymiyyah says you should know there was no grave on earth of a prophet of Allah SWT that is known except one, and that was the grave of Muhammad Wasallam. For wisdom, Allah SWT make them hidden. So any other claim that you hear nowadays that this is the grave of Yunus, this is alayhi salam, this is the grave of this, this is the grave of that, all of these things are claims. Allah SWT hid them for wisdom. No, because if people know about their existence and their place, you can imagine what will happen in that place. You know. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the only one whose grave is, is known. Salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhim ajma'in. So what I'm trying to say is we should be very careful. Since we don't have an appointment, you know, and we don't have any agreement with the angel of death to inform us about the time we will be dying, that means the time for repentance is, is now. The time for repentance is, is now. يقول المؤلف رحمه الله فاصل بين عفو الله وأمره. What is the title of the first name with you? Okay. So this are uh, that it depends on the nusakh. Those people who are writing the 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 the. The, were, the, were, were not commentary, uh, those people who are writing the book, you know, those people who t take the, 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 the minus, the, the describers, you know, the scribes, those people who are writing the, the first, uh, the, 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 the book from the, from the Mu'allif, or they're taking it from, from the manuscript. So uh, uh, each one of them is given title, all from the commentator, the Muhakkakin, you know, when you take Nusakh of the Adda'wa you find different titles. Okay. So here is uh, the title is Bain Afullahi wa Amrihi. Relationship between the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his forgiveness. In some places, the topic will be talking about those people who deceive themselves by depending on the Afu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgetting his command. You get it? In the Nuskha uh, that is uh, with me at home, also it has different titles. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, good. So uh, Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ الْجُهَالِ اَعْتَمَدُوا عَلَىٰ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَعَفْوِهِ وَكَرَمِهِ فَضَيِّعُوا أَمْرَهُ وَنَاهِهُ He said, you see, so many ignorant, so many ignorant, you know, people who are ignorant, so many of them, اَعْتَمَدُوا, you know, they depend, you know, a lot on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His forgiveness and His generosity. They depend on these, you know, فَضَيِّعُوا أَمْرَهُ and as such, they neglected the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They stay away from righteousness. And they forgot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shadid al-aqab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nabbi ibadi anni an al-ghafoor al-rahim wa anna adhabi huwa al-adhab al-alib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tell my slaves, he's talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the message to all of us. That we should remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives. And nobody forgives like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his punishment is the severest punishment you can ever hear in your life. And the, the greatest one you can ever, ever hear and, and, and see in your life. So that's what we got also from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So all of these nusus. And those that we're going to hear now, Ibn Qayyim will quote a lot, which, will, which should bring us to our consciousness. I use the word should bring us because there are some people who will never reflect on, on these nasus. They should bring us to consciousness.
So he will mention all of these nusus, but I just want to draw our attention that these nusus are meant for what? You know, to help you to maintain the balance. You already know that Allah SWT is the most merciful. You should know that his punishment also is so great. It's very painful. So you maintain the balance. You will become a righteous person and repent and stay away from sin. And in case you commit sin, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose, right? So please do have this in mind. Uh, let's uh, move forward. He says, many, many ignorant people, they deceive themselves. They think that just because they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the most merciful, this is more than enough for them to go against his laws. His mercy is so overwhelming and as such he will not punish any of his slaves. They forgot the other nusus that are saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shadidu laqa. وَأَنَّهُ لَا يُرَدُّ بَأْسُهُ عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْمُجْرِبِينَ Subhanallah. لَا يُرَدُّ بَأْسُهُ عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْمُجْرِبِينَ The anger of Allah, the wrath of Allah, the punishment of Allah cannot be stopped if Allah SWT put it on the criminals. Allah says, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِلْمِنْصَادِ فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ الصَّوْتَ عَذَابِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَبِلْمِنْصَادِ Allah SWT mentioned those criminals, you know, Criminals from Ad and Thamud, you know, and Fir'aun, you know, and those people who came after them, you know, Qarun, Fir'aun, and Haman, and those people who came after them, wa Qamulut. Allah SWT mentioned them. He says, فَكُلَّنَ أَخَذْنَا بِذَمِّهِ He says, إِنَّ رَبَّ فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبَّكَ سَوْتَ عَذَابٍ Allah Subhanahu wa Taala cover them. He whipped them with the whip of the punishment. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala visit them with His punishment. None of them miss Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yumli li zalimi hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflithu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives respite uh, for the oppressor. You know, He gives them respite. Hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflithu. Until the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get them, they will never escape. وَمَنْ اِعْتَمَدَ عَلَى الْعَفُوُ مَعَ الْإِسْرَارِ عَلَى الذَّنْبِ فَهُوَ كَالْمُعَانِدِ And whoever depends on the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy, but at the same time insists in the commission of the sin, he said this is just like somebody who is arrogant and intentionally committing the sin. المُعَانِد is somebody who rejects the truth, who doesn't want to, so arrogant and he doesn't want to accept the truth. قَالَ مَعْرُوف Ma'roof said, Raja'uka li rahmati man la tuti'ahu man la tuti'ahu min al-khudlani wal-humqu. Ma'roof said, if you claim that you have hope, you know, you have hope on, on some, somebody who you are not obeying, he said, this is a sign of stupidity and idiocy. You're disappointing yourself, you know. And you're disappointing the one that you claim, you know, to have greater hope and husn al in him. And that's true. Definitely this is a kind of stupidity and insanity actually. وَقَالَ بَعْضِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Some scholars said, مَنْ قَطَعْ عُضْوًا مِنْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِسَرِقَةِ ثَلَاثَةِ دَرَاهِمْ لَا تَأْمَنْ أَنْ تَكُونَ عُقُوبَتُهُ فِي الْأَخِرَةِ عَلَى نَحْوٍ مِنْ هَذَا He says, the one who cut off your hand, in this dunya, because you stole, he's talking about the, uh, the criminal. Huh? He said, the one who cut off your hand in this dunya, because you stole three dirhams, what do you expect when you are taken to? And this dunya, your hand was gone completely because of three dirhams. He said, don't you ever be in a state of peace that on the day of judgment, he will not treat you in the same way. Actually, it is greater. This dunya is just a warning for a person to repent. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person is punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, through the authorities when he committed a crime and he got his life being taken or some part of him being taken according to his crime, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fadak, that's it. You know, on the day of judgment, he will not be punished by Ibn Allah ta'ala. That will be kafara for him if he repents. Okay, do remember this. If he repents, if, if he repents, but if he doesn't repent, what, what is waiting for him in the Akhirah is far greater than what he receives here. Unless if Allah SWT forgives him. وَقِيلَ الْحَسَنِ نَرَاكَ طَوِيلَ الْبُكَاءِ فَقَالَ أَخَافُ أَنْ يَطْرَحَنِي فِي النَّارِ وَلَا يُبَالِي They met Al-Hasan Al-Basri. They said, we saw you crying a lot. You know, you cry very easily. You cry a lot. Very soft when it comes to these matters and you cry a lot. 
he says yes because I am afraid to be amongst those people who will be cast in hell and Allah SWT doesn't care. Okay, so that's why, you see, those people, they're very dedicated, you know. They're very dedicated to the religion. وَكَانَ يَقُولُ إِنَّ قَوْمًا أَلْهَتْهُمْ أَمَانِي يُوْ أَلْمَغْفِرَةِ حَتَّى خَرَجُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا بِغَيْرِ تَوْبَى يَقُولُ أَحَدُهُمْ إِنِّي لِأَنِّي أُحْسِنُ الظَّنَّ بِرَبِّ وَكَذَبْ وَلَوْ أَحْسَنَ الظَّنَّ لَا أَحْسَنَ الْعَمَلَى Al-Hasan used to say that there are some people unfortunately they deceive themselves you know with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they think you know they just because they believe in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is more than enough to do whatever they want and this deception remain in them until the time they go out of this life with sins without repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they said, no problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, nothing will happen. So they let themselves to reach death without repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of what? Guru. So one of them was told, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just fix yourself? Ya akhi, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And guess what? What did he say? SubhanAllah. He says, I am doing whatever I am doing because I have husn al-dhanna billahi azawajal. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, وكذب. He said, who kathab? He said, he lied. Because if he has husn al-dhanna billahi azza wa jalla, he will fix his attitude and righteousness. But he doesn't have husn al-dhanna billahi azza wa jalla. That's why he became who he is. وَلَيَعْضُ بِاللَّهِ وَسَعَلَ رَجُلٌ الْحَسَنَ فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا سَعِيدٌ كَيْفَ نَصْنَعُ بِمُجَالَسَةِ أَقْوَامٍ يُخَوِّفُونَنَا حَتَّى تَكَادَ قُلُوبُنَا تَطِيرٌ Somebody told a Hassan, he says, what do you advise us to do with people who are always scaring us? You know, they tell us things which are so scary until the time we feel that our heart are going to fly from their position. You know, our heart are going to fly from their their position. قال قال والله لا أنت أصحاب أقوام يخوفونك حتى تدرك أمنا خير من أن تصحب أقوام يؤمنونك حتى تلحقك المخاوف. SubhanAllah. He said, if you're talking about comparison, he said, I would choose for you to be with those ones. Try, manage, you know, understand things correctly, but they are better than, he says to me, to be in company of those people who are scaring you until, uh, uh, I mean, they are scaring you until you reach the, the peace, you know, because when you are afraid of Allah SWT in this life, Allah SWT will grant you the peace in this life. So they scare you until the time you reach the aman. These are better than those people who grant you a man until the time you are confronted by, by the fears in this life and also in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمَّ الْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِذُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ So those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not mix their belief with shirk and ma'asi, these one are the one that will be granted that Allah SWT will grant them al amnu and they are the guided guided ones. That is a very beautiful hadith said by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah subhanahu wa taala said wa izzati wa jalali la ajma'u li li abdi amnain wa la khawfain. In huwa aminani fi dunya akhftuhu fi al akhirah. Aw akhftuhu yom ajma'u ibadi. Wa in huwa khafani fi dunya أَمَّنْتُهُ يَوْمَ أَجْمَعُ عِبَادِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I swear by my greatness and my power and my generosity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I swear by my greatness and my power لَا أَجْمَعُ لِعَبْدِي أَمْنَيْنِ وَلَا خَوْفَيْنِ I will never combine for my slave two um, you know, two pieces and also وَلَا خَوْفَيْنِ two fears you will never be in a state of خَوْف twice and you will never be in a state of a man twice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you fear me in this life, I'm going to grant you peace. In this life and also in the hereafter. But if, and the most important one is in the hereafter, which is mentioned in the hadith, mentioned in the hadith of Qudsi. And if he is in a state of peace in this life, you know, doesn't care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but here also we have to understand it correctly. What does it mean? It means a person who has the aman, you know, that drive him to go and do the sins in the way he wants. He doesn't care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We're not talking about somebody who is granted peace of mind by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. We are talking about somebody who depends on the aman, you know, and disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way he wants. That's gurur. This is the one that is going to be placed in a state of fear in the hereafter when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get an idea, we should understand the nusus correctly. When it comes to the having aman or having khawf of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of these have to be attached with the correct approach. If a person is doing the wrong way, the wrong thing, you know, and then he claims that he is khaif lillahi azza wa jalla, we tell him hayhat. We tell him kithabt. You have to fix it. The best fear and the only fear that is recognized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is in accordance to that which was done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, we have our own base, you know. Always refer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to get whether you're correct or you're wrong. Very simple life. I do this, you do this, mine might be correct, yours might be correct, my, I might be wrong. We just go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see. What did he do, you know? We don't do it in our own way. We do it in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best is his own way. Actually, the only way to be recognized Islamically in his way. That's why when some people, when some people exaggerate in their khawf, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, this is not my sunnah. One of them said, I would never eat in the daytime. I will always fast throughout my life. And the other one said, I will never sleep at night. I will always sleep at night. Uh, I will always uh, pray at night. And the last one said, I will never marry. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is not my sunnah. I pray and I sleep. I fast and I eat. And I marry. Whoever stays away from my sunnah is not one of us. So when you claim that you are having the fear of Allah, you must do it in the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing it. When you claim that you are having a hope in Allah's matter, you must do it in the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is having it. قال والله لأن تصحب أقواما يخوفونك حتى تدرك أمنا خير لك من أن تصحب أقواما يؤمنونك حتى تلحقك المخاوف وقد ثبت في الصحيحين من حديث أسامة بن زيد قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يجاء برجل بالرجل يوم القيامة فيلقى في النار فتندلق أكتاب بطنه فيدور في النار كما يدور الحمار برحاه فيطوف به أهل النار فيقولون يا فلان ما أصابك ألم تكن تأمرنا بالمعروف وتنحن عن المنكر فيقول كنت آمركم بالمعروف ولا آتيه وأنهاكم عن المنكر وآتيه This is a very important hadith that needs uh, a bit of elaboration so I guess it's the best place for us to stop here uh, today inshallah uh, I will deal with it بإذن الله تعالى in the next uh, when, is, when is our next class? Uh, on Thursday, we will deal with this hadith and the rest of the hadith. As I said, uh, from now on onward, until the end of this chapter, Ibn Al-Qaim will be caught in hadith, very beautiful hadith and very good and excellent reminders from the Prophet Sallallahu which I believe they are more than enough to bring each and every one of us to uh, his consciousness and to come back to Allah SWT and fix our relationship with him and become a good person and have the relief in this life before we meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, uh, Barakallahu Feekum, if you have any question, please do come up with it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta istaghfir kawatu ilaik. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Allah Khair. Uh, first question is by Sister Saada. Uh, can we take uh, sweets or chewing them while we are walking or lying down? Uh, it's better not to do it because it's unhealthy. And if a person lie down, you know, especially depending like this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said we shouldn't do that. Okay, this is the, the attitude of uh, the Jew. You know, we shouldn't eat like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنِّي لَا أَكُلُ مُتَّكِئًا إِنَّمَا أَكُلُ كَمَا يَأْكُلُ الْعَبْدُ He says, I don't eat while lying on the ground. I eat just like the way a slave eats. That's why he fixes his, his leg, you know, put it on the ground. And he sit properly in a very, very humble way of eating. That's the method of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second question is regarding uh, Sunan al fitra hmm. Is it allowed to exceed 40 days if a person doesn't need to uh, nail, for example, or do any of the other Sunan al No, if, if, they, don't, if they don't grow, 
then there is nothing to cut. But if they grow, a person shouldn't wait, shouldn't wait until 40 days, actually. Shouldn't exceed 40 days without cutting. Islam is a religion of hygiene and tahara. A person shouldn't remain without cutting those things uh, after 40 days. But if they don't come out, then there is nothing to cut. Could you help us further understand the following ayats? And the first ayat you mentioned is from Surah Al Insan. Uh, if it is if it is possible for the question, who is the question, Abdurrahman? Uh, Surya. Uh, Surya, please do forgive me to answer this question in the next class, uh, Thursday, inshallah. Because in uh, in few minutes, I will be having another class, and this need uh, focus. So I would like to answer it when uh, I relax uh, more, inshallah. So in the next class, Abdurrahman, please do start with this. Uh, don't forget, inshallah. So, Sheikh, should we continue or should we? I'll continue. I still have a few minutes, inshallah. Our second question is, can there be a situation where a person wills to walk on the straight path and he still perform deeds? Can, can, that, can there can be a situation? Where a person uh, wants to walk the straight path or follow the straight path and perform deeds but it's destined to be a disbeliever. Okay, this, as she said, this is related to the other one, and it is related to the matters of Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this needs also a bit of elaboration, uh, because it's a very sensitive uh, issue, that a person is in the right way, but he is destined to be a dis uh, disbeliever, uh, so it seems to be a waste of time, you know. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this question. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu fixed it for them when he told Suraka, he said, this is not in the way you understand. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created every one of us towards that which uh, uh, he created him for. I mean, it makes things easy for each and every one of us towards that which he created us for. So it is not to say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, already decided everything and as such, our actions have no value. This is wrong. Uh, this is wrong. So our job is to practice the good and this is a sign that we are choosing the right way and we are choosing the Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah this one I will explain it more but I just decided to give you this introduction uh, in case we are not able to meet in the in the future. Okay, The best understanding is uh, to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to righteousness and to stay away from sin and we're supposed to engage in this. Uh, if you do the righteousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you and this is the sign that you're choosing the good path, and this is a sign that you are, you are going in the in the right uh, direction. You know, but if a person depend on that uh, that uh, assumption and that belief that maybe he might be in in hell, so his actions are going to be useless and wasted. Uh, so this is a sign of uh, negligence, and also this is a sign that a person is choosing the wrong way, and uh, this is a sign that a person is making a choice to hell. And he's choosing for himself this way. Because Allah SWT granted us uh, what you call free will to choose what we want to do. So I will talk inshallah in the next class about how does the thing work. You know, What is it supposed to uh, be understood when it comes to the matters of Qadr and how we're supposed to uh, uh, behave in this life. But for the time being, as I said, get busy. Uh, get engaged and get busy doing that which Allah SWT asks you to do and stay away from the evil things. You are on the right way. Don't worry about the future. What is written, this is not ours. Our job is to do what Allah SWT asks us to do, inshallah. In the uh, next class, I will elaborate more, inshallah. Question of Brother Yusuf. Salaam alaykum, Shaykh. Salaam. I've heard that a tafsir of the ayah, وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ حَمَدَاتِ الشَّيْخِ is actually seeking refuge in Allah from Mawtul Fajr. Is that to say correct? Uh, these are some of the interpretations uh, of the scholars. Okay. Any deception that comes from, from the shaitan, when you ask Allah SWT in this ayah, you're asking Allah SWT to protect you from any deception from the shaitan. 
you get the idea? So not necessary uh al Fajr. Okay. Mawt al Fajr for the good one it doesn't it uh, I mean it's not a bad thing. You know? For the good people it's not a bad thing. But for the wrongdoers it is really a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any benefit of dying in sacred places like Mecca or Medina? Uh, is, is, is there any benefit in dying in? Sacred places like Mecca or Medina. Can a person ask Allah to take his life in these places? Yeah, if you're asking Allah, ask Allah to take your life in Medina. Because the Prophet wasallam says he will intercede for somebody who died in Medina. But you should know that all of these nasus, my uh, dear brothers and sisters, they are restricted to our attitude. You know, even la ilaha illallah that you say when you are when you are about to die, it is restricted to who you are. You know, la ilaha illallah doesn't benefit anyone except somebody who used to put it into practice and action. You know, so it's a favor that Allah SWT is granting those righteous people. Dying in Medina, if a person is wrong to war, it will not benefit him. You get it? It will not benefit him. So we're talking about good ones. You know, to die in Medina, be in light Allah is a blessing and a favor for them to have that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Abdul Rahman. Another question about the same brother. Uh, on the day of judgment, would a person be judged against abusing or backbiting a leader who is a disbeliever? Uh, is this okay, if if this uh, if this question I will uh, uh, forgive me, I will answer this question uh, next class because there is a hadith that talks about this backbiting. I think hadith number three. Uh, in the next class, the hadith number three discusses this matter. So I think it will be good to address the topic next class, inshallah. Mm. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, if we have extended family who have this group, uh, have this group we are mentioning, uh, uh, they kept on procrastinating, learning the deen properly, and their children started to leave Islam uh, uh, in a subtle way. What would be wise for? Uh, what would, would be a wise advice to give them? Okay, this one also needs a little bit a longer answer, and, uh, and uh, I guess it is not urgent, we can delay it. The time for my next class already arrived uh, late, one minute or two minutes. So, <coughs> Brahman, I will have to stop here by force, and uh, also I apologize to everyone. Uh, I will meet you on Thursday. Thursday, we can stay until Fajr. <laughs> I know you will never stay, but... Uh, Thursday, I will give more time for all the questions to be answered, insha'Allah. So I really apologize to the last uh, questioner, and also I saw a question coming from Yusuf, and whoever is asking, I will see you in the next class, Okay, barakallahu feekum, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa anta, astagfirullah wa tubi ilayk, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.